probably one of the most common conditions that come into the clinic is a headache, whether it's a tension headache or a migraine headache. I would like to give you a motion specific way of addressing headaches. Basically what I do every day in clinic. When someone walks in, I don't just ask them where the pain is. We look at a lot of different things, especially posture. And probably some of the most common things that cause headaches are our anterior posture. Shoulders forward, sitting in front of a computer, texting. We live in a society that basically has this anterior posture where the head comes forward. So when someone comes in, we need to go through a number of areas. We need to take a look at the shoulders. We need to take a look at anterior, posterior, up into the neck, base of the skull, in the jaw, and on top of the head. So I usually start out with the shoulders. Just slide back here a little bit, Mickey. And in terms of working with people, there's a, a number of different modalities we could use, a number of different treatments. But I'm just going to get in here and kind of open it up a little bit to begin with. How are we doing there? That's good. Is that a little bit tight? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we probably spend oh, several minutes actually getting in and kind of loosening up the shoulders, going anterior, posterior, checking out range of motion and just feel where the restrictions are. You can feel that right there, can't you? Yep. Quite tight. Yep. You know, getting a little bit of torsion in there, changing our vector and our position depending upon the individual. And we'd also go posterior here. Just reach forward here, straight out. Good. Okay, you doing okay? That's good. Yeah, drop your head down <laughs> here. Oh boy. Head down. That's pretty tight. Oh. Okay. So there's a lot of different techniques we would incorporate, a lot of pin and stretch procedures. We may even do some instrument procedures where we get into a little bit of grass in an area. But generally speaking, I like to get some motion in there and try to loosen things up. How's that feeling there? That's nice. Yeah. And back. And of course, we're always going to work bilaterally, try and get some symmetry in there. Get around, move around a bit there. Good. You're right handed, aren't you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more tension there. Yeah. Good. Excellent. You doing okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty tight there. Good. You okay? <laughs> All right. And of course, as I said, you're going to spend several minutes working around the shoulders until you find some relief. Drop your head down, take this across, good. Right down. It's pretty tight, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> okay. And of course, the patient has walked in, they've got a splitting headache, and they're wondering, why is it just up in my shoulders here? Well, a lot of the structures that come from the shoulder blades actually insert at the base of the skull. Muscles such as the levator scapula go from the top of the shoulder blade and serve in the top three cervical vertebrae. There we go. You okay? Yeah, it's getting better. <laughs> Line your back here. And so anything that goes on back here is going to affect the neck. It's also, if things tighten up, it's going to bring the base of the skull down and check the effect of jaw mobility there. Okay. Why don't you take your right hand, go on top of your left breast and push it down flat. Always ask permission to work, permission to work on the pecs. Get in the front here. A little tight there, aren't we? <laughs> Just a little. You okay? Yes, I am. Good. That's good. This is such a common thing. People do not realize the farther forward your shoulders go, the more tension you're going to have in the back of the shoulders and up into the neck. Good. Now back here. Push the other side down. Thank you. You doing okay there? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit tight there. Good. Good. Okay. Now, come on up now. And I'll start working my way up into the neck here. And it's really interesting. Of course, we're going to go through range of motion and check to make sure that we don't have any restrictions. The majority of the lateral flexion takes place in the lower cervical spine, the majority of the rotation in the upper cervical spine. And make you slightly restricted here. Yep. Why don't you. Uh, Take your head into a position like make like a rooster forward. There we go. And again. Oh. You okay? Yeah, it's a lot tighter on the right side. Yeah, <laughs> you feel that tension. Yep. So quite often we will combine exercises that we prescribe to patients and then we'll get them to perform those exercises while we actually treat them, such as this one is one of our books called Make Like a Rooster. <laughs> right now I can feel right at the base of your occiput there, really tight. <laughs> Doing okay there? Fantastic. Good. And while we're here, why don't you just open your mouth for a sec there? A little bit of tension here. Can I close there? Okay. Open again. A little tight. Uh-huh. And back. Good. 
and again. So we actually have a complete jaw protocol under motion specific release if you'd like to take a look at it. It's a 10 point protocol covering five structures. We also go internal and external. And it's really important to work on all the structures around the jaw for full mobility. Doing okay there? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, go ahead and line your back again. While we're here, it's also really important for me to say that we don't just work on the soft tissue structures. We need to take a look at the joints because we're surrounding each joint. We have a lot of neurological receptors. As soon as those receptors fire, the surrounding area, what we call the periarticular area, lets go so we restore a normal range of motion. So if we're working up the back, you've got about 17 muscles that connect into the scapula. When I adjust that mid-thoracic area, they all release and then we get good scapular motion. There should be a 2 to 1 ratio between your humerus and your scapula, and that can be restored quite often just by manipulation. So I'm just going to do a little anterior manipulation on there. Okay. Actually bring this up here. Good. Back down. Back down. Good. Good. No problem. Okay. And while we're here, let's take a look at the neck here. That's not bad. I'm a little restricted there. <laughs> Laterally there. And there. Just relax the head down. Good. And again. Back. Thank you. Come on. Okay. Oh. A little bit easier? Yeah, everything just okay. feels so light. Now, we're not, we're not going to stop here. As I mentioned, we're also going to take a look underneath the hair. And a lot of times in Chinese medicine, they have particular techniques where they actually do acupuncture on different meridians which converge on top of the head, or they do combing. And what's really neat is the research shows that when you actually release this area, it has a huge effect on the cerebral cortex of the brain. So, we're going to do some pretty simple hair pulling here. Are you okay? Yep. Lots of hairspray. Put your hair down. <laughs> there we go. I always joke with patients that I'm actually pretty good with headaches, but I'm horrible with hair. <laughs> there we go. You doing okay? Yes. Does that feel okay? Yep. Yeah. And uh, if I just take my hand away here, put your head down. What do you feel? It, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this really makes a huge difference. Oh, big time. Yeah, I'm going to the other side here, and right down, good. Hopefully it's starting to release now. Now, yeah. I'm going to also go and kind of work around the head here and kind of pull on the hair a little bit. Not too hard, of course, just so we can get a full release. There's a muscle underneath your scalp, the posterior being the occipital area here in the frontalis in the front. It's called the occipital frontalis, and it meets in between with fascia. And sometimes the scalp gets really restricted, like right here, you can feel a little bit over here. Mm. Pull on that, see if we can't loosen it up a bit. Good. Now, after you go through all these different procedures, quite often a person will walk in and they'll have a really bad headache, and it'll be reduced, could be 50% or even completely gone. And it's quite a common thing. But by taking this perspective, working around the entire kinetic chain, your results will be incredible.